All right, everyone, welcome back. Um, and we have Trisha once more, this time putting more of her data site hat on to talk about data citations. So this is a serious talk. We're talking about data. So no, no goofing around, no roaring. Okay, so um, I'm the executive director of DataSight. I've been with DataSight um, for three years in the executive director position. And um, what I want to talk to you about today is, um, that's easier to read, <clears throat> is just give you a really quick overview about DataSight, what our community, the communities we serve and, and the services we provide. And I think yesterday the Crossref folks did a really nice job of talking about when Ginny was showing who the communities are, et cetera. Um, we frequently get asked is what's the difference between Crossref and DataSight. So hopefully I can shed a little bit light on, uh, light on that. I also want to talk about data citation and um, dive into that a little bit. Um, what some of the joint efforts we're working on with Crossref and data citation and why it's important and, and um, how you can participate. And then um, talk a little bit about the Make Data Count initiative and um, some other tidbits. So DataCite um, was founded in 2009. We're a nonprofit organization. There's, uh, we have seven staff members. We're located in Germany. Um, and we're our, what we work on is providing DOIs for research data. And um, we provide um, services to over 1,700 data centers and over 17 million DOIs. So we're really a tiny little baby compared to Crossref. Um, but we really have a very focused community that we work with. Um, if you look at our vision and mission, I know that it's pretty tedious to see somebody's um, vision and mission statement, but why I'm showing this to you is I think that you'll realize um, that it's very similar to Crossrest, create, find, cite, connect, and use research, uh, or use publications, use articles. Um, but in going through my slides, let me show you a little bit about where we differ. So if you look at the communities we serve, thinking about the types of members that we serve, um, we work with academic institutions. Um, that's uh, uh, the majority of people that we work with, but also research institutions. Places um, like CERN and um, uh, 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 other research institutions, national government agencies, um, NOAA and NASA, and service providers, those who are providing um, uh, platforms for hosting research data. Um, national libraries, we used to be almost 100% national libraries, but in the last three years, our profile has really changed. Um, then you dig in and look at disciplines. Um, when I say general, those are mostly the academic libraries, academic institutions that just have a whole host of data um, of different types that they are providing to us. And we don't, unfortunately, break our data down um, specifically by um, the type of resource they are. Um, we also work a lot with earth science community, a lot of climate change community. Um, and the fastest growing group is biomedical. And um, that's really exciting for us. DataCite is involved in helping with the NIH data commons to think about how, um, what globally unique identifiers look like. So differences between Crossref and DataCite, it's really the communities we serve, but also um, our services. And the first thing is technical infrastructure. Um, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but we have a centralized tool called Fabrica, and you can do, see a little screenshot there of, um, of CERN's DOI Fabrica dashboard. And this is where people can um, go and manage um, all of their DOIs, um, collect statistics on those DOIs, and um, et cetera. So one thing that, uh, to note, though, is that you, we also have APIs, of course. Um, you're not going to mint 17 million DOIs using a, a web-based form. Um, one thing that really makes us different, I think, um, than Crossref is our metadata schema. It's really designed for non-traditional literature. And thinking about what that means, I'll talk about a little bit more in a second. But it's not for article publications. Um, once people create a DOI, we have a search index, um, and it's uh, publicly available, a link checking service to check the health. Um, and this is particularly important when you're wor working with a lot of repositories that are around the world that change and, and they might not have a lot of funding, um, they might be a little bit transient, they're moving to another organization. So making sure that the health of those, um, of those URLs and DOIs is, is critical. 
We also um, make a big emphasis on creating downstream impact um, and exposing our metadata as far and wide as possible. Um, most recently, we have a Google dataset search, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, uh, but then also making our data available to third-party indexing services. We have full integration with ORCID and some um, back-end integration with Crossref. So the second thing we do is our community infrastructure. And um, again, we're only seven people, so we're, um, our, we're pretty small and we like to cover a lot of territory. Um, um, and so we have to rely a lot on remote communication with people. Um, we have our website that's really a brochure into what we do. Um, we have something called open hours where we try and have a, a very kind of casual uh, conversation with all of our members so they can come and, and tell us um, what they like and what they don't like. Um, we have a series of blog posts um, and newsletter and we have a support site that, I, uh, that we're continually working on where our technical documentation, user guides, um, et cetera. And we also have a help desk that um, is really ramping up. So again, going back to what makes us different. Um, so data are the primary citable object um, when we look at, at data site. And thinking about um, how data connects to data, earlier versions of data, how it connects to software, how it connects to workflows, and then making those connections with researchers through ORCID, um, connecting to publications with Crossref, um, connecting data to funders um, through the funder registry, and then um, through ROAR, um, we'll also connect data to those organizations. I knew there would be a few in the crowd. Ah and um, hopefully connecting data to grants, and those are some of the things that, that we're really working with Crossref on. So at DataSite, we're really um, incredibly proud of, of all of our DOIs, but there's a few that stand out um, that I think uh, are, are worth noting. So um, folks like the CERN um, has DOIs for the Higgs boson um, and the Nobel Prize winning uh, uh, research, and then also gravitational waves of LIGO. And so, um, there's all kinds of data within um, data site, um, some, some things like this, but also some things that are, are very small data sets by small repositories. Okay, so now we're gonna switch to um, talking about data citation. Um, and so data citation is, this is a, a picture of uh, Alex Hanolt. I don't know if any of you know who he is. He's a, a rock climber and he's climbing El Capitan, um, really with no ropes, which I just think is so impressive. Um, and so this looks really hard, and I thought, often when I talk to people about data citation, they think, oh my gosh, this is so hard, how we, um, you know, it's really not part of our practices, it's not what we do. But what I wanna suggest to you, it's not that scary, is that we have all the equipment necessary to move data citation forward. You have friends to hold the ropes and make sure uh, everything is in place. So. I think this is a real opportunity for um, this community um, to get involved in data citation. So um, Crossref and, and DataCite, um, we recently launched a data citation campaign, um, and that's a series of, of blog posts, and I invite you to look at those on the, on the Crossref site and on the DataCite website. Um, we held a workshop at um, FORCE 2018 where we had repositories and publishers coming together and saying, okay, you need to cite your data. Here's how you can do it. Here's how easy it is. Um, we're also uh, further going to be launching uh, education series and uh, newsletters, um, but uh, appearing at conferences like this one to talk about uh, data citation. So before I go further, what is data citation? Hopefully everybody here has a pretty good idea about it. Um, it's references to data, the same way researchers routinely provide references to um, other scholarly resources. However, data are often shared, but they are not often cited. They're embedded in text in a journal. Um, uh, you have to contact the author of a journal, and we're really looking um, forward to changing that. And if you look at the big picture and see why it's important, data citation promotes access, discoverability, um, it supports transparency and reproducibility, obviously. Once you find something, um, you can say, okay, this journal article has this data set. The, the data set can be, provide the supporting information. Um, the data can be reused, um, again, for thing, unintended consequences. People might, um, who are looking at climate data, they might also be looking at poverty data. 
Um, so really kind of pulling data sets together that, um, and using them in, way, in new, new ways for new science. Having citation allows you to track, measure, and count data and provide credit. Um, credit for, for your own um, use of your own data, but others who are using your data, others who reuse your data. And there's also mandates. There's some sticks out there along with the carrots. Um, funders are saying you have to share your data. A good way to do that is to say, here's a citation to my data. Um, publishers have data sharing policies. Um, and so here's a good way uh, data, through data citation of honoring that, that policy. So digging in a little bit more why publishers should care about data citation, it supports scholarship. That's why we're all here. It extends research. And so data citation is a really important piece of that puzzle of providing the whole story along with a journal article. And data cited consistently provides transparency and context, as I earlier said, is that it provides the whole package of what people are doing. Repositories, um, the communities that we work with, um, they are very interested in increased visibility, both of their repository and their data. A lot of repositories run on a shoestring. They want um, to make sure their data is cited and they get credit for it. And the people who are producing that data, they want to make sure um, that it's, it's um, being cited. So this is a quote from ICPSR, and I think it really summarizes quite nicely um, the importance of data citation. It, it can't be accessed for reuse or reproduced, cannot be tracked and counted to reveal its impact and its potential. Data creators cannot receive adequate credit for their intellectual output, and the investments by funders and scientists to create those data stops producing dividends. So there's some community initiatives out there that can really help with data citation. The first is the Joint Declaration of Data Citation Principles. This came out of Force 11. These are eight principles, and its sole purpose is, is to um, say why we need data citation, what its, what its functions are, um, and what are the attributes of citation. And it's a pretty readable document. I encourage um, others to look at that. And it's human and machine readable of looking at citation principles being human and machine readable. FORCE also um, had an implementation pilot um, and coordinating between publishers and repositories and identifier services, Crossref and, and DataCite were involved in both of those. The other thing is Scholix. Um, Scholix, um, we're trying to dispel what Scholix is. It's not a thing. It's not a service. Um, no one is building it. You can't touch it. Um, but it's really an information model to, um, it's a change initiative to get people to promote data citation. So Jennifer, I believe, is going to talk a little bit more about event data. And I just um, want to touch really briefly on event data. Um, it's a service jointly developed by Crossref and DataCite to capture references and mentions of other events around DOIs that are not provided within um, the DOI metadata. And data sites event data provides data metrics or data usage, um, specifically views, downloads, as well as citations. And we are um, bundling that information up in our API. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. So what I'm showing here is um, where we are with data citation. And looking at this graph, um, we took the top eight um, providers of data citations within um, Crossref. And so you can see an upward curve. Sorry, I'm going to move this a little bit. Maybe not. Um, so you can see an upward curve with um, Springer Nature and, and F1000 is there is a real increase in data citation. This is good. Pat yourselves on the back. Um, OK, but don't get too excited about that. <clears throat> so if you look at where the um, data citations are coming from, it's not so good. So if you look at the links from Crossref publication to data site resources, that's meaning, okay, Crossref is, people are, has a data citation, a data site citation. Um, there's only 50K. If you look at data site resources to Crossref publications, we have 900K. So I think the publishing community has a little bit of work to do here. And, um, but we're here to help. Um, and this was a lot about what that workshop um, that I mentioned earlier that was at FORCE 2018. Um, so for, for DataCite, um, you really, uh, our members deposit their data, deposit their metadata, and um, include the field's related identifier, related identifier type, or um, relation type, and push that to the event data hub. 
Um, I won't go into um, the cross-ref, um, and I think Patricia Feeney can help you with that, and, um, but there's really two methods that you can use with cross-ref. So one of the things that we really want publishers to do is to, I think many of you have developed a data policy that includes data citation, and that's not too scary. Um, and, but implementing that data citation um, policy is where it gets a little bit tricky. And explaining to authors how they should be citing data um, and telling them what the advantages are to citing data. Many of you would have to update your internal workflows um, and, uh, and that's, that's, we recognize that that's scary and um, we're happy to help with that. Um, include, datas, <coughs> include these citations in your Crossref metadata and Crossref is making this as easy as possible and I'm sure they would be happy to help you with it. So there's kind of the, all of the different pieces we have, but we really need the incentive, incentives to move the um, community forward. There's not a culture around data citation, even though it's super important. And often, even if you cite data, it may, not, it may get lost in the publisher's workflow. And um, so this is something that we're, we're discovering. So going forward, um, thinking about the Making Data Count initiative is um, thinking about the incentives to move people forward. And so this is really, I, I know when you guys go to movies and you see uh, uh, previews for upcoming movies, they always say, imagine a world. So I want you all to imagine a world where data are considered a first class research output and there's rainbows and unicorns and, and bunnies and, and squirrels hopping around of really thinking about um, where data is a first class citizen. So the Make Data Count project is really moving us forward in that. And the goal of the Make Data Count project is to develop and deploy the social and technical infrastructure um, around data citation to elevate data to a fir uh, first class research um, output along with more traditional project products. And that is um, both usage statistics and citation. So when we started working on the Make Data Count project, um, it was funded by the National Science Foundation and we talked to the research community and said, what do you care about most when you are sharing your data? And they want citations. Who's citing uh, my research data? That was the number one thing that they cared about. So we, um, working together with the California Digital Library um, and uh, the um, Data One, um, we're this is funded by the Sloan Foundation, we developed um, a counter code of practice stating how um, usage should be measured and reported. So when you talk about how to measure um, data usage, it's a little tricky. You look at what do you count? When somebody um, downloads a, a whole data set, if they look at the metadata, if they download a new version of the data set or a, a particular variable, how do you count that? So that counter code of practice really helps us with that. DataCite hosts a hub for all the data level metrics um, and we use event data to track citations um, and we drive adoption by showing how easy it is to do it. And so we're working with um, several repositories on, on, um, on the Make Data Count initiative. If anybody is interested in this, please let me know. And we want to engage across all the different research communities. And because this is so new, we know that um, we're going to have to go backwards and say, you know, this is not really what we thought it was going to be and, and um, do a little bit of, uh, of fixing and, and keep moving forward. So this is what um, da the Make Data Count project looks like. Here's a record um, from DASH from the University of California. And you see down in the lower right-hand part of the screen, um, this, uh, this data set has been viewed 75 times, it's been downloaded six times, and there's two citations to that. This is a real game changer for the repository community. They really wanna see the impact of their data. So now, um, moving on to just some other tidbits um, that you might be interested in. Um, I mentioned earlier um, that uh, the Google data set search, um, <clears throat> and so the Google team worked very closely um, with us um, thinking about how to um, index research data um, and we're using schema.org. Um, we have a, a blog post on this if anybody is interested in, in, in this. But one thing I wanted to show you is these um, Google dataset search is now linking to Google Scholar. So you see that little orange box, 24 scholarly articles have cited this dataset. Um, we're not quite sure how 
this data compares with our data using event data, et cetera, but we're gonna, we're gonna dig into this a little bit because I'm, I'm super curious about that. So stay tuned. Um, the other thing that I wanna point out is something called the Repository Finder Tool, and um, this is um, with funding from the American Geophysical Union, and this um, project was led by um, Shelley Stahl, who's here, and we'll be talking later today. Um, we often have <clears throat> researchers who want to, they don't know where to put their data. Or we have publishers who don't know where to tell researchers to put their data. And so the repository finder tool uses some very specific criteria um, to, um, for fair data. Um, so data is, uh, is, is, uh, can be trusted. And so if publishers don't want to keep up their lists of, of what repositories um, to put data to send um, researchers to, then they can um, send them to this. So finally, hopefully a nice breezeway through um, what DataCite is and how we're a little bit different and how we're very much the same as Crossref and uh, the services we provide. And thinking about data citation, um, why it's important and how you can get involved. Um, and then finally, the Make Data Count initiative to really um, provide some incentives to move that forward. So that is it. If there's any questions. Yeah. Any questions? I'll get us started. So given you, you, as well as Jeffrey, have mentioned specific instances in which DataCite and Crossref have been working together with each other, what's one thing that you'd like to see out of this partnership next year moving forward um, and or something that you'd like to see Crossref do in, in and of itself next year? Um, I think uh, I would love to see the data citation initiative move forward, and that's one thing that we're working on with messaging, but also are there tools that we can help publishers with data citation? Are there tools where we need to help repositories with data citation? How do we um, socialize this with our different communities? Um, also the ROAR initiative, obviously, I think this is a big one um, for both of our organizations and for all of you in this room of really kind of connecting all of those pieces. <laughs> Any other questions? Yep. We've got one, a microphone coming up right here. Hi, Bianca Kramer, Utrecht University. I just wondered, do you have any concept of what you consider data and what not in terms of different publication types, for instance, text-based types, specifically preprints, how you consider what should be done with data site and what should be done with Crossref? Um, so, so one of the one of the slides I had kind of that circle of things. Um, so I always think um, data is the primarily primarily cited object, um, and so generally we get a lot of people coming to us and saying, "Okay, what kind of information can I put in data site?" We're very open to that because the research communities that we work with. They, um, every, every little sector of that research community is very, very different. The humanists look as text as data. Um, a lot of the health science people look at images, brain images as data. Um, and so it's all over the place. But generally when people are dealing with um, published material, journal-like content, conference proceedings, that's where I think, um, that's where we um, push them to Crossref. And it's not always that easy. It's hard to tell. Hi. I have a question over here. <laughs> um, since I'm now at a um, humanities faculty, so arts and humanities, like scholarly uh, information studies could be anywhere, but now I'm at a humanities faculty, I see that um, a lot of researchers in that area, when you talk about data, they feel they don't have data, um, but it's more research objects, and we kind of have in the back of our head, yeah, that's still data, but just using the terminology doesn't really reach them. So I was wondering what your point of view is on that. Um, that's a real flashpoint. Um, if you use the word data, uh, the humanists, they just say, okay, this, we're not part of this conversation. And we, um, internally, when we were crafting our vision mission statement, um, we purposely left the word data out and just say research because we want to be inclusive because 
it's just as you said, the humanity community, they're really, um, they're allergic to the term data, we found. I have another question. So many of these publishers, in fact, deal with data themselves. They handle it. They, in fact, many of them um, provide their readers access to it in the form of supporting information files. Do you have any views on this? That's an easy question, Jennifer. <laughs> so, well, yes, absolutely. Um, because when you have it as a supporting information file, it's supporting that particular article. Um, with DataCite, it can be supported by many, 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 many articles. And it can be supported by software. It can be supported by um, new versions of that. So bringing all of those different pieces together. Um, and I know it's not easy to slice it that, that particular way, but we really think about setting your data free so it can blossom and bloom and be a little butterfly. So. <laughs> Butterflies are fun. I like that. Okay, we have another question up here from Gunther. But, Oh, what, one second, I'm sorry, Gunther. If you could um, speak your name and your affiliation, thank you. Can I just follow up on this? So would you recommend to a publisher to assign data site DOIs to a supplementary file if there are data in that supplementary file? Yes, we um, work with a, 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 a couple of publishers on this and um, that they feel um, that uh, they can provide um, data site DOIs for their data sets but then also um, their cross-rep DOIs. And so we also have several repositories that do this as well. Bicodemo um, and uh, Sage is, is one of the people. But, you know, I think that's a really tricky question, and I think that's something that cross-rep and data site continue to talk about of, you know, how do we, how do we work together to make this really easy for people with a, the goal of making research available to the community. So. On that same thread, do, do you think that it's, uh, sorry, this is uh, Dave Schott from Copyright Clearance Center. Do you think that, um, you know, from talking with publishers, it seems like it's it's the materials that are involved in a peer review process that tend to be hosted and, and linked out from the commercial website, whereas the author, the researcher may have, you know, far, far larger assets that they're depositing, registering DOIs either based on policies of the university, you know, funding organizations. Do you see publishers having to change kind of how they think about peer review and, and asking authors to, to give them either more? Because I think that there's some, there seem to be some significant ownership and rights issues with supplemental data and research data. Some of it isn't copyrightable at all by nature. Some of it has sensitive medical information. Some of it, publishers actually have the authors sign it over to them and they own it after that process. And it seems like a kind of wild, wild west of reuse nightmares. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, the peer review piece um, for journal for data is very, very tricky. And um, I think it's something that a community needs to tackle. That's uh, conversations that are happening in the Research Data Alliance. Um, and also, um, Shelley Stahl has been working on this for AGU. Of, of, and we recognize that if you put something, another uh, task on editors and reviewers, that they're going to need to review data as well. That's just not going to happen. So how do we make that easy? Do we just make sure that the data is well formed, it has um, quality metadata, and then push that out and um, let the community um, look at that data, understand that data, and let them surface um, what potentially is wrong with it or what is potentially good with it? 